Hello everyone and welcome back to Love English. I'm Sabra and today we're going to be looking at 40 advanced personality adjectives. Now these are not your run-of-the-mill adjectives like outgoing, sociable, messy. These are a little bit more unusual but that makes it all the more interesting as it's nice to sometimes mix up your vocabulary and use a word which is more advanced and less commonly used. Now what I would like you to do at the end, I would like you to try and describe your personality using some of these adjectives and also we would love it if you would try and describe Leila and I's personalities. Also guys, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell and do follow us on our other social media channels as well. So it's always good to start on a positive note, so we're starting with the positive adjectives, the ones that are more complimentary about people's personality. <laughs> So number one is witty, witty. Now a witty person is clever and funny with words. So they will make remarks that are funny, but also very clever in the way that they use the language. So we can also call a person a wit if they have this kind of humor. It's a compliment to say somebody is witty because it means they're funny and they're clever. Now famously, Winston Churchill, our previous prime minister, our wartime prime minister, he was known for being very witty. So let me give you an example of something he said. Now to Lady Astor, who was um, a very well-known and haughty lady, a little bit um, arrogant, she said to him, Winston, if I were your wife, I'd put poison in your coffee. And he replied to her, Madam, if you were my wife, I'd happily drink it. <laughs> so this is witty. Number two is tactful, tactful. Now tactful basically means that you are very careful in the way that you use your words so that you don't offend people. It's very similar to diplomatic. So a tactful person is, is important to have them in the office, in work environments, because they know how to use words so as not to offend people, they know how to give people bad news in a better way, they're not too direct. So an example sentence would be, she was very tactful when she told me I hadn't been selected for the promotion. The next one is good-natured, and this is another way to say kind, really. A good-natured person is friendly and pleasant and has a kind heart. So we might say, oh, she's such a good-natured girl, I'm sure she'll be very happy to help you if you ask. Number four is vivacious, vivacious. I love this word and the sound is great, vivacious. A vivacious person is somebody who is very enthusiastic, lively, energetic, full of life, um, and it's much more used to talk about women. A vivacious woman, we would say, and it's a compliment. So we could say, Layla is a very vivacious teacher. She's full of energy and enthusiasm in the videos. Number five is bubbly, bubbly. And a bubbly person, again, is happy, full of life, friendly. It's a very positive thing if you say a person is bubbly. They're the kind of person you want around, they're easy to talk to, easy to have a giggle with. So an example sentence would be, I get on very well with my sister-in-law, she's a bubbly person, so we always have a good chat and a laugh. Okay, the next one is gregarious, gregarious. Quite similar to bubbly, but the key thing here is this person is sociable. They like to meet other people, they're friendly, they love being with other people, basically. A gregarious person. So you might say, she's going to be absolutely fine at the wedding, even though she doesn't know anybody, because she's so gregarious. The next one is tenacious, tenacious. Now tenacious is a person who is very determined to achieve something against all odds. We often talk about goats being very tenacious, the animal, the goat. Even though it's very hard to get to the top of the mountain and the mountain is very craggy and rocky, you see the goat still going and they usually make it to the top. So if we say he or she is tenacious, it means they're very good at holding on and finding a way through problems and achieving what they want to. The next one is courteous, courteous. And this basically means very polite. So if you're a courteous person, you are very polite, you, you know your P's and Q's, you're a well-mannered person. It's a nice thing to be. So we might say, I could tell he was a gentleman by the fact that he was so courteous. The next one is meticulous, meticulous. This is a person who is very clean and obsessive about smaller details. So you might say, I'm meticulous about organizing and tidying my desk. 
or he's meticulous about the way his files are organised. If you watch Friends, or if you know the TV show Friends, the character Monica in Friends is very meticulous. I would say I'm quite a meticulous. Number 10 is notorious, notorious. Now, if you're notorious, you are a person who is famous for a bad habit or famous for bad things. It's like famous, but in a negative way. So we might say, oh, she's notorious for forgetting her keys, or he's notorious for showing up late. Number 11 is jovial jovial. This is a person who is cheerful, who is usually happy and positive. We might say, oh, you're in a jovial mood this morning. But we can also say it about their whole character, that the kind of person who is usually happy, usually cheerful, we would say they're jovial. So we could say, she seems very jovial today. She must have had good news. The next one is loquacious, loquacious. It's a beautiful word, so you can enjoy saying it, loquacious. This is a person who enjoys talking and they talk a lot. So you might say, oh, she's very loquacious, so I think she'll do well in the interview because she can talk easily. It's mostly a positive personality trait, although obviously if you're too loquacious, you can start to annoy people a little bit if you're too much of a chatterbox, but it's mostly positive. It means chatty, really. It's a nicer way of saying chatty. So instead of saying, she's a chatty person or he's a chatty kind of person, you can say, hmm, he's very loquacious, so I enjoyed our conversation. The next one is upbeat. And this again means positive, in a good mood, good vibes, everything like that. So you would say, I like having him around because he's usually upbeat, meaning he's usually in a good mood, full of hope and positivity. Basically, it's a better way of saying positive. So instead of saying, he or she is a positive person, you can say they are upbeat. The next one is conscientious, conscientious. And this is a person who puts a lot of effort and pays close attention to their work or studies. So usually conscientious people are very popular with the boss or with their teacher because they are the person who stays on track, puts a lot of work in, is very careful, meets deadlines, everything like that. The next one is ingenious, ingenious, fantastic adjective. An ingenious person is very good at being creative, at generating ideas, solving problems. Basically, it's another way to say creative and innovative, to be ingenious. So we can say a person has a lot of ingenuity, ingenuity. So we could say, my son's teacher is excellent because she's always coming up with ingenious new ways to engage the children. The next one is flamboyant, flamboyant. And basically, this is a very confident person who um, likes being the center of attention. They might dress in a way to attract attention, so wear very bright colors and perhaps a bit of a crazy outfit choices sometimes. But they are basically a fun person to have around. They are the life and soul of the party. Although for perhaps sometimes for some people, they can be a bit too much, but usually they are friendly and fun to have around. So we could say, he's such a flamboyant character and loves wearing funny outfits. He's the life and soul of the party. Perhaps have a think now, do you know a person who is flamboyant? Or are you flamboyant? Tell us about that in the comments below. The next one is thorough, thorough, hard word to say, thorough. And this is a person who is very detailed about things. They really pay attention to details. They don't like to miss anything. So it's a good characteristic for going into administration or um, a detective or something like this, engineering, basically where it's very important that you pay attention to details. He's a detective, which really suits him because he's a very thorough character. He loves paying attention to details. The next one is broad-minded, broad-minded. And you can, of course, also say open-minded as well, to be broad-minded or open-minded. So basically this is where you are very accepting of many different kinds of beliefs, cultures, different lifestyles. You are not a judgmental person, you're um, open-minded to that. You, you can accept it instead of thinking immediately it's wrong just because you don't know much about it. So in the UK, this is definitely considered to be a good thing. We are very accepting about different religions, culture, sexuality, everything like that. So it's considered to be a very good thing here. The next one is diligent, and you could also say industrious. You can have two for one here, diligent and industrious. They basically mean the same, a person who works a lot and is very careful about work. They put a lot of effort into their work. To be diligent or to be industrious. 
So for example, we could say, the students who are the most likely to pass IELTS are the ones that are the most diligent. The next one is resourceful. And this is a person who is very skilled at solving problems on their own. They're very good at finding a way to find solutions to problems, um, to get resources basically, so to find a way to get things that are needed without having to ask perhaps their boss or other people. So they're good at, so they're good at finding a way through more difficult times basically. The next one is affable, affable. And an affable person is friendly and polite. This is also quite a British word, as you know, we love politeness here. So we might say, he seemed an affable sort of chap. Or, ah, oh, that receptionist was very affable, she was very helpful. Okay, everyone, now we're moving on to the more negative characteristics, the things that are perhaps less desirable in a person's personality or behaviour. So number 22 is aloof, aloof. Now, a person who is aloof is quite reserved and they don't want to be a part of things. They don't easily get involved. They might be quite a distant character. Now, sometimes shyness can be mistaked for aloofness. A person who is shy sometimes can actually come across as aloof. Um, so that's unfortunate if that happens. But also this can just be the person's personality that they don't like to get too involved. They can be quite reserved. But generally, this isn't considered too good a personality trait. She was very aloof at the party and hardly chatted to any of the guests. The next one is haughty, haughty. A haughty character is somebody who comes across as a bit superior to others, a little bit posh, a little bit arrogant, but they aren't particularly friendly. They come across as quite superior, maybe even a little snobby. So we could say there are members of the British royal family who are known for being a little bit haughty. Number 24 is pugnacious, pugnacious. Now, if you know the breed of dog, the pug, you'll kind of get the gist of what this means. It means ready for a fight, a little bit like how small dogs are. Small dogs are known for having a loud bark and being quite um, aggressive sometimes because they know that they're little dogs, so they know they have to bark more um, to defend themselves and seem bigger. So this is basically the personality trait of the person. A person who is ready for a fight and ready to um, talk a lot and get involved in arguments, an argumentative sort of character. So we might say, oh, gosh, he was in a pugnacious mood. The next one is rebellious, rebellious. And this can be a good thing if you're rebelling against a just cause. However, a lot of the time, rebellious personality types can be troublemakers, perhaps. So it's a little bit of a mixed adjective. So rebellious basically means the person who likes to rebel against things, likes to go against authority, um, perhaps they uh, defy their parents or their teachers or their superiors at work. So yes, it can be a little bit of a, a difficult personality type if you're prone to being like this. Number 26 is grouchy, grouchy. <laughs> And basically, this is very similar to grumpy. If you are grouchy, you're in a bad mood. You feel, you don't feel good. You have um, a kind of, yeah, bad mood, basically. Sometimes on a Monday morning, I can be a little bit grouchy. Or even in the mornings in general, I'm not a morning person. If I haven't had my cup of tea, I can be a little bit grouchy. Very, very similar to the next one, which is grumpy. Grumpy is perhaps more of the general personality type. You can say, he's a grumpy person, it's the person who is prone to being grouchy often, who is often a grouchy person. So grumpy is more the general personality type, the person who has a bad mood, who seems out of sorts quite often to be grumpy. And people are especially grumpy or grouchy when they're tired. What makes you grumpy or grouchy? Tell me about that in the comments below. The next one is melancholic, melancholic. And this is a person who has a sense of sadness in their personality. They, they perhaps like listening to sad music, they like watching sad movies. They're a little bit of a depressive character type. Now, it can be good to be like this. You can be sensitive, for example, you can be poetic, but if you're too much like this, then you might not be good company for other people and you might sometimes find yourself feeling blue too often. So if we say, oh, he's a melancholic, you know, he's always listening to sad music and he needs lots of alone time when he gets down. We might say something like that. So to be a melancholic. The next one is bombastic, bombastic. And a bombastic person is very full of themselves, meaning they're very um, quite confident, even a little arrogant. 
and they like to impress you with their words. So they're, they're very confident and they want you to be impressed by, by what they're saying. And they might use um, very lots of big words to try and make it seem like they're very clever. Sometimes politicians can come across in a bombastic way. It's not really a positive thing because um, they seem too much like, like they're trying to impress you, like they're showing off, basically. So we could say, the Prime Minister came across as a little bombastic in his speech. I'm not sure he's going to be very popular with the public. The next one is petulant. Petulant. And basically, this is very similar to childish. If you're petulant, you easily complain and are rude like a child. You know how children suddenly will say, oh, that's not fair. Why did she get a bigger ice cream than me? Or I wanted that one. And they suddenly get very moody and childlike. This is petulant. And sadly, even us adults sometimes can behave like this. We can behave like um, very large children. So when somebody is being like this, you would say, come on, stop being so petulant. You're acting like a child. You're being so petulant. So an example sentence could be, because the actress complained about everything on the movie set, the director described her as petulant. So number 31 is quick-tempered or short-tempered. They're basically the same. And this is the person who very quickly gets angry. They go up very quickly, very quick to anger, but usually they come down quickly as well. So I think you may have an idiom in some of your languages like this. We can say somebody hits the roof. That's our kind of idiomatic expression for this, to hit the roof. They go up very quickly. So I would say that my father's personality type, sorry dad if you're watching, is that he is quite quick tempered. He quickly gets angry, but then he also calms down quickly as well. We have to say, dad, calm down. It's not the end of the world. So it's not the worst personality type, but it's obviously better if you can be a bit calmer. The next one is bad tempered. Now this is different to quick tempered because if you're bad tempered, you're often in a bad or aggressive mood. So it's more of a permanent thing, whereas quick tempered, you go up and you come down. If you're bad tempered, you're very often in a cross mood. It's your general temperament. So it's not a good thing. The next one is devious, devious. Now a devious person is a plotting person, a person who is trying to work things out and plan things to get the best out of the situation. And this can be behind other people's backs and it can be in a way that can even hurt other people. So it's not a good quality. If you're devious, you're kind of cunning, a little bit like a fox. So we could say, my colleague was very devious. He found a way to get very close to the boss and make the boss dislike some of the other teammates. So in that way, he seemed the most appropriate person for the promotion. The next one is calculating, calculating. Now this one is quite similar to the previous, but perhaps this is a more logical way to do it. So the person who thinks in a way where they're trying to benefit themselves and they're moving life and people like chess pieces, like pieces on a chessboard. So calculating. So we might talk about a person made a calculating move or a calculating decision. But if we talk about it as a general personality type, it is quite negative because again, it has this kind of, this, uh, you know, very um, dishonest perhaps approach and a way that is selfish. The person is trying to plan things in order to get the most out of the situation for themselves. The next one is big headed, big headed. And this is very similar to arrogant. So if we say she's big headed, we mean she's egotistical. She loves herself too much perhaps. So we might say, She's so big headed. She thought she was the best in the English class and told everyone else that her grammar was much superior to theirs. Number 36 is sulky. Now a sulky person is in a bad mood when they can't get what they want. So they behave again a little bit like a child. They show you that they're unhappy in their body language. They might refuse to talk. Uh, they might have um, a grumpy facial expression. So they might look a little bit like this. Or we could say the children were sulky after they were told they couldn't have any more sweets. The next one is scatterbrained, scatterbrained. Now if you're scatterbrained, you easily forget things, you're a bit of a disorganized person, your brain is a little bit scattered, it's a bit all over the place. So if you're scatterbrained, you easily forget things and this can be an annoying habit. So we could say he's so disorganized, he's always losing his wallet and his keys. The next one is narcissistic, narcissistic. And this is where you have too much interest in and admiration for yourself. So, so you're almost quite in love with yourself if you're narcissistic. So we might say, oh, he's such a narcissist. 
meaning he always thinks he's right, he loves himself, he might be quite a vain character, somebody who likes their appearance or thinks they're always the best at everything. So this can be a really annoying quality for other people. If we say, oh, he or she is a narcissist, we mean they just love themselves too much. Number 39 is pompous, pompous. This is a person who is too serious and full of self-importance. So sometimes perhaps old-fashioned teachers, uh, maybe even police officers can sometimes come across as a bit pompous, like a bit too serious, a bit too full of their own self-importance. Um, and we consider it to be a negative trait because it's not nice to take yourself too seriously. And these kind of people don't have a sense of humor. So the example sentence is, he can sound a bit pompous when he starts boasting about his acting career. Number 40 is obnoxious, obnoxious, a little bit difficult word to say, obnoxious. This is a person who is um, quite unpleasant and rude. They come across as a rude person, unpleasant, they're not friendly. So if you say, why are you being so obnoxious? It's, it's like saying, why are you being so rude? Or that receptionist came across as so obnoxious, she really didn't want to help us at all. And finally, the last one is miserly, miserly. Now you may know the more common one, which is stingy. This is a person who is tight or mean with their money. They like to keep their money with them. They don't like spending money, which makes them not generous and it can make them quite mean. So they're not willing to help you out with money or spend money on other people usually. So miserly people have a hard time at Christmas because of course Christmas is about being giving to others, giving gifts to others. So it's not good to be a miserly person. Right, everybody, they were our 40 plus advanced personality adjectives. Don't forget to try and describe your character with some of these adjectives and also try and pick a few to describe Layla and I. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.